Nocturnal's whim is the greatest mystery to everyone. There have been volumes written on the subject. Does she exact payment when we die? When we suffer, does she revel in our misery? No one knows. The return certainly seems worth the risk, though. My mom. What do we have here? misguided impression that it is only the Dark Brotherhood that values stealth and the protection of a darkened corner. You could believe that burglary is for the petty and the poor, and that there is no honor in the act of theory. To you, I say, you couldn't be more wrong. Now guys, there is a group of three incredibly talented master thieves which utilize their knowledge of the shadows arguably better than that of a Dark Brotherhood, and they are also highly respected for their skill and ability in this art. Quite simple. Carly is close, I'm certain. They are known as Nightingales, patrons of the Mistress of Shadows. The Nightingales are possibly the most legendary thieves to ever sneak across the lands of Tamriel, and yet their identities remain lost and mysterious to the public. Their existence itself is debated over by many, as there are nothing more than rumors and whispers to base any sort of proof upon. If a member of the Nightingale trio should fall, a member from the Thieves' Guild is chosen to take their place. While there is no formal link between the Nightingales and the Thieves' Guild, it only makes sense that someone who devoted their life to robbery should be chosen to rise above his rank. The entire process is highly secretive and the other Thieves' Guild members are to be kept completely unaware of it. With all of this enigma surrounding the Nightingale Trinity, it is a surprise that even one story has leaked into the general population's knowledge. The story itself dates back to the Third Era, when a man named Juggerthorn hired Draven Indorel to perform a high-profile heist. Draven, then a member of the Nightingales, was to seduce Baron Saya and then coerce the location of the Staff of Chaos from her. This is actually the plot of Elder Scrolls Arena, and this staff is apparently made of old magic and is able to transport people in and out of the realms of oblivion. Very powerful stuff. It is said that after all this, Jagger betrayed the Nightingale and tried to kill him using the staff. The Nightingale powers were too strong, however, even for such a powerful staff and it is said that Draven managed to escape. Now guys, Carlia is actually his granddaughter. Will I ever see you again? With all of this talent and natural ability for the ways of thievery and deceit, the Nightingales need a fitting god to follow. One who could not only magnify their innate stealth skills, but grant them the use of items with incomprehensible magical properties. That god is Nocturnal, the Diedric Prince of the Night and the Cider of Locke residing in the Everglome, her realm of oblivion. Nocturnal also claims to be the aspect of the void. She is the epitome of secrecy and misconception. While many follow her and her teachings, she has actually no true form of worship, and unlike most Daedric gods, she prefers to keep things from getting violent. Even the Nightingales themselves don't necessarily worship Nocturnal, but rather enter into a business contract with her through the oath each member takes. In return for their eternal servitude in the Twilight Sepulchre, the Nightingales are allowed to reap the magical benefits of Nocturnal's power. Invincibility, a drastic increase in luck, the ability to leech health, and even the power to force an enemy to betray his adversaries are all perks granted by Nocturnal to her trio of thieves. In addition to that, she has numerous artifacts which allow the holder a variety of advantages. This skeleton key, which is essentially an unbreakable lockpick, is not only useful for its practicality, but for its enchantment as well. You see, the key is able to tap into the hidden potential of whoever holds it, and for this reason must be heavily guarded within the tunnel's temple. If the skeleton key were to be taken by anyone with ill intent, 
the ramifications could be dire. It is said that this is the source of luck for the thieves of Tamriel, and the only key with the capability to open Nocturnal's Plane of Oblivion. The Vow of Shadows is another highly interesting item created by Nocturnal. It gives the benefit of both invisibility and speed, making for the ultimate stealth weapon. After being given to a legendary archer for a particularly challenging mission, the bow was lost. Its whereabouts scattered across Tamriel for ages until finally landing in a museum for artifacts in Mournhold displayed like a trophy for all to bear witness to. Now, perhaps one of the most prestigious artifacts of Nocturnal is her coal. Worn most predominantly by the Thieves' Guild member known as the Grey Fox, Nocturnal's cowl gave the wearer the power of total animosity. Even if one was to remove the cowl in public, the spell would remain intact, and no one would have any recollection of the identity of the wearer. Any past relationships the wearer may have had are all erased and all who had previously come in contact with him completely dismiss his existence. The call itself has a message, scrawled in diatric down the center. It reads, Shadow, hide you, which is the motto of the Thieves' Guild and the Nightingales. It is said that when they die, the Nightingales become the Shadow and aid those who choose a life of stealth and larceny. With all of this power and knowledge, Nightingales are private too. It is no wonder they themselves are so unmatched in skill. I mean, we have heard legends of the might of each of these artifacts on their own, but brings the thought to mind, what if someone were to get a hold of all three? If one were lucky enough, or perhaps crazy enough, to obtain every one of Nocturnal's items, a single person would be granted more power than Nern is ready for. Invisibility natural speed, anonymity, and the tool to unlock doors both physical and metaphorical would all be at their fingertips. With the coal, no god could stop you. With the bow, no god could survive you. And with the key, Nern can't contain you. Hey guys, so this is something new that I'm doing, and I'm doing it because I need your help. YouTube is a harsh mistress, and not all of us can sustain ourselves based on just views. Skyrim is not as new as it once was, and there's still time to tell whether Elder Scrolls Online will succeed or not. To ensure the continuation of this channel, I'm opening up a profile on Patreon. Now, Patreon is uh, pretty much like Kickstarter, but instead of one big one-time pledge of money, uh, it's more about pledging small increments of money, so you would be donating to the channel something like a dollar or two a month to support me as the creator. Um, if you become a patron by donating to the channel, I'll be offering amazing rewards like having one-on-one -on -one talks with you every month or even having you narrate a whole lore video with me on the channel, which would be amazing. Um, when Elder Scrolls Online comes out, you'll be receiving a special rank on the guild and your character will be even appearing on video. So there are all kinds of rewards if you donate to the channel. So if you could please just take the time and even just donating something as small as one dollar, you would be making a huge change in assuring that the channel will continue to exist. Uh, this would allow me to make just as much lore videos as I possibly can, making a... Hopefully I want to make a, a full 100% playthrough of Skyrim, um, just like hardcore, but just with more mods, so it would be fantastic if I could do that. Um, and then um, a lot more videos of Elder Scrolls Online, as soon as it comes out, just as much videos as I can. But if you could just go and check out the, the Patreon page, it would mean the world to me. And thank you so much for your help, and see you guys next time.